Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of ectopic heartbeats which happen on exercise. One of the biggest anxieties in people with ectopic heartbeats is that if they notice them on exercise, and this is because everywhere you read on the internet it says that if your ectopics go away on exercise, then they're benign. And therefore people worry that if their ectopics are actually noticeable on exercise, or that in some way uh, <clears throat> the ectopics uh, come on on exercise, then that is way more sinister. And it is not uncommon for me to meet people, you know, who people contact me and they say, look, I've had ectopics for many years and I cope with them, but they were only happening at rest and now I've started noticing them on exercise and I'm panicking and I've stopped exercising, help. So I thought I'd do this video to reassure you. Okay, now the first thing to say is that it is true that ectopics generally get less with exercise. And this is because when you increase the heart rate, you're reducing the amount of time between each heartbeat. And therefore, there is less chance of ectopics creeping in, right? So if you reduce the amount of time between each heartbeat, there's less chance of the ectopics coming in. But that doesn't mean you can't have ectopics on exercise as well. In fact, in my job, I often have to supervise exercise tests in patients. And I'll see at least one or two ectopics in, you know, creep in in a majority of patients who come and have treadmills, not for ectopics, for something else. So you can get ectopics on exercise. It's also true to say that most heart conditions become more noticeable on exercise because you're increasing the demands on the heart. So if you have heart artery narrowings, for example, then the first time the heart will really have a problem receiving the blood it needs is when it's working really hard, such as when you're exercising really hard. And therefore, you know, the heart is asking for a lot more blood and it's not getting it and then it can become more irritable. And if it becomes more irritable, then it can cause ectopics. Uh, similarly, if the heart is any, in any way damaged or if you have uh, heart valve problems, heart valve narrowings, then again, you will notice that more when you're working really hard. Okay, And that may manifest as ectopics. Um, <clears throat> so how do you know whether it's just the kind of incidental ectopic that everyone gets or is it because there's a problem with the heart and the heart is distressed and the ectopics are a sign that the heart is getting more distressed. And to my mind, the answer is that there are two things to look for. One, consistency, and two, progression. Let me explain what they mean. Consistency means that if there is a major heart problem, you would usually expect the ectopics to happen every time you do the same level of exercise. If you get them one day when you're walking briskly, and then you can go and do a fast run on another day without a problem, then it makes it highly unlikely that there is an underlying problem with the heart and that the heart is getting distressed, okay? So it has to be consistent. Now, if you say, oh, well, look, you know, every time I go on the treadmill, I start getting ectopics, 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 otherwise I never get them, but every time I go on the treadmill, I get them. Well, that's more inter that's something that needs to be investigated. But if you say, look, I'm generally fine, I can generally do things, but yesterday I was on the treadmill, I noticed a couple of ectopics. Today I went to the treadmill, nothing. That makes it very unlikely that your ectopics are a sign that the heart is in some way distressed. And then there is progression. And what I mean by progression is that if your ectopics are happening because the heart is distressed, and if you continue exercising, then you will should get more and more ectopics. I, you know, most people would say, well, look, you know, if I'm getting... <clears throat> I started on the treadmill, as soon as I started I got a couple, and then I continued exercising, I didn't get any. That, to my mind, is really, really reassuring. But if someone says, look, I started on the treadmill, I got two ectopics, I did a minute and I was going a bit faster, I got 15 ectopics, then I was going, kept going, I got 30 ectopics, then I kept going, I got 100 ectopics, that's a different matter. So progression is really important. Highly, highly unlikely. If your ectopic burden is not progressing with continued exercise, then that makes it a lot less likely that the heart is getting distressed. Okay, uh, <clears throat> It's always good to have some baseline investigations if you haven't had any. And I would always recommend that if you've noticed ectopics on exercise, that you have a stress echocardiogram, an exercise echocardiogram. Because with a stress or exercise echocardiogram, you can study the heart at rest, you can look for consistency and progression, uh, and you can also work out if all the heart muscle is getting all the blood it needs at peak exercise. So it basically is a proper MOT for people who are getting symptoms on exercise. Uh, but otherwise, if you have a normal stress echocardiogram, then it's highly, highly unlikely that you need to worry about your ectopics on exercise. 
Sure, if you're getting them, it's worth getting checked out. But once you've been checked out, don't worry about them. All right, I know it's a little bit concerning, but largely it's because of all the kind of misinformation on the internet about the fact that, oh, if you get them on exercise, they're, you know, far more sinister. It's not the case. It's only in a very small, small proportion of patients who have significant heart valve disease or significant heart artery narrowings, and that's generally in the older category of patient. Um, so I hope this reassures you. I was meant to put out a video yesterday, but unfortunately I was struck by this hideous, hideous illness called man flu. Anyway, I think I'm slowly on the mend. Uh, have a great night. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Please consider sharing the videos. Uh, also, please come and visit me on my Facebook page. Now, you can get to my Facebook page and my email by typing in yourcardiology at gmail.com in the Facebook search engine. Uh, and my website, which is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. And I'm also on Twitter uh, as Your Cardiology. Thank you so much for listening and have a great night. Take care.